So, I've been on Windows for basically my entire life. I've used every single version of Windows starting with Windows XP and going all the way up to Windows 11. Every computer that I've ever owned has been a Windows machine, and I've built several Windows PCs over the years. So needless to say, I'm very comfortable using Microsoft's OS. Which is why I was a little anxious about making the switch over to Mac OS at the start of 2022, but now that I've been using my Mac for the better part of a year, I'm really glad that I did. So in today's video, I'm going to be taking a brief look at my experience jumping over to Mac OS as a lifelong Windows user. I'll touch on what actually drove me to jump on the Mac train, some of the things that I really like about the platform, as well as some things that I think that Windows still does better than Apple's OS. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So before I talk about my experience with macOS, I feel like some backstory is necessary, at least to explain why I actually made the jump over in the first place. I'll try to be as quick as I can, but if you really don't care to hear me talk about this, then just go ahead and jump to the next chapter. So long story short, at the start of 2022, I decided that I needed to get a new laptop. The one that I was using at the time just wasn't capable of editing 4K footage and I was going to be moving, so I really needed to have a 4K capable machine in order to work on projects while I was between houses. So I did some browsing and eventually settled on the ASUS ROG Zephyrus M16. Now this laptop is perfect on paper, it has a great screen, a portable design, and plenty of horsepower for all the gaming and editing that I would ever do. Not too long afterward, I picked it up from Best Buy and immediately started using it and it was every bit as good as I had imagined. Until things went wrong. Now, what followed was a couple weeks long hassle of technical issues and returns, which I'm not gonna bore you with here, but put simply, the laptop actually failed on me twice. So the first issue that I had was that the screen actually started to go out. I'm not sure exactly what was causing the issue, but it was something along the lines of dead pixels or just a faulty display. The second issue that I had was that there was actually some very noticeable performance issues that literally cut my performance in half. Again, I wasn't really sure what was causing the issue, but there was no way I was going to go along using a nearly $2,000 laptop that only performed half as well as it should have. Both of these issues were so bad I ended up having to take the laptop back. Now it was around the point that the laptop started having issues for the second time in a row that I really heavily considered making the move over to the Apple side of the aisle. Now, I had considered getting a Mac in the past because of their reputation for being just solid computers, especially for creators that didn't really experience very many issues. But I had always kind of pushed aside that thought knowing that I could get a much better deal with a Windows computer. Well, given my recent bad experience with a high-end Windows laptop, I thought that maybe now more than ever would be a good time to switch over and see just how the experience compares. So after just a little bit of researching, I decided to pick up the 2021 16-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a 256 gigabyte SSD, which now leads us to today. I've now been using my Mac as my everyday computer for both working on videos and just about everything else that I might need it for. I've already used it to work on several videos, including a music video that I shot for a friend, and basically all the videos that have been released on my channel since the start of the year. Since I started using my MacBook as basically my daily driver machine, it's really given me the chance to see just what makes the Mac workflow so appealing. And there's lots of things that I've really come to enjoy while working on Mac OS. The first of those things is just optimization. Everything runs so smoothly and the whole user experience is just so snappy and quick. Now you aren't immune to hiccups or even the odd freeze up, but while I would say that I dealt with unresponsive programs and crashes on a near daily basis with my Windows PC, these kinds of issues have really become a rarity when going about my day to day on my Mac. Something else that I've really come to love on Mac OS is the integration with the rest of Apple's ecosystem. I've actually been an Apple guy for quite a while, even while I still used a PC. I use an iPhone, I've got an Apple Watch, iPad, AirPods, the whole deal, but I love how well my Mac slots right in with the rest of my Apple devices. The ability to send and receive iMessages from my computer, syncing my notes, photos, documents via iCloud, 
the ability to airdrop files between my phone and my computer, and the ability to have my AirPods seamlessly connect to my computer are all things that I find myself using on a daily basis. And honestly, it would be kind of difficult now to go back to a workflow where everything didn't work together so effortlessly. Now, one other kind of weird thing that I actually really like in Mac OS is the way that installing programs works. On Windows, you'll find yourself going through several steps within an install wizard to actually get your program fully installed and running. But on Mac, all you have to do is literally just drag an icon into a folder and you're done. And the same actually goes for uninstalling apps too. All you have to do is locate the app icon within the applications folder, drag it to the trash bin, and that's it. I just love how simple both of these actions are, and why shouldn't it be that way? Going through several tabs within an installer just to get your application running just feels clunky by today's standards. And now that I'm used to installing and uninstalling applications on Mac, I really wouldn't want to do it any other way now. Now, even though my experience overall has been very, very positive, it hasn't been without its own quirks. There are still things that I personally believe that Microsoft's OS handles better than its Apple counterpart, starting with multi-window workflows. Something I've always enjoyed on Windows is the ability to just drag almost any window to a corner of the screen, and it'll then fit said window to that half of the screen. You could then easily add other windows to the other side, and just like that, you've got yourself a multitasking setup. It's easy, simple, and intuitive. And with the release of Windows 11, your options are increased even more with added formats for multi-window setups. Now, macOS does offer a similar feature with Split View, which can be triggered by going over to the little green dot on your application window, clicking and holding until a drop-down menu appears, giving you a few options, including tiling the window to the left or the right of the screen. From there, you can choose what other application window you want to be tiled alongside with it, and you're good to go. Now, this is actually a pretty neat option, and I'll be honest, I have used it quite a bit up to this point, but it still just doesn't really feel quite as snappy and intuitive as the way Windows handles the same operation. So there are just a couple more things that I wanted to touch on before wrapping up this video, the first of which being file arrangement. Now, maybe I'm just super OCD, but by default, none of the files will auto snap to a grid. So if you touch any of the files and try to move them around, God help you, because they're going to be all over the place unless you manually turn on snap to grid for each and every window. And with Apple being such a finicky company when it comes to how things can be arranged, I mean, you can't even move around your iPhone apps without them being limited to a specific grid. It's just so puzzling to me why things wouldn't be similar here. It helps with organization and it also just looks a lot cleaner. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is the fact that there might be too much security. Now this one might sound really, really whiny of me. After all, who doesn't want a super secure computer? And you're right to think that. It's just that for some things, that really tight, closed loop approach that Apple takes to security makes doing even simple things kind of a pain in the neck. Like when I first installed Discord, I wanted to be able to screen share my desktop and other applications. But in order to do that, I had to spend about 25 minutes total going through and manually changing settings. And at one point I actually had to go into the recovery mode and change my system profile to be less secure just to allow Discord to share my desktop audio. At this point, it kind of seems like a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it's nice to know that it's difficult for programs to use things like your camera or microphone, and the little bit of extra security does give me some peace of mind about things like viruses or malware. I know that Macs famously don't get those, or at least that's how they used to be pitched. I'm not 100% sure if that's still true, but to be quite honest, viruses really weren't something I ever dealt with when working on Windows anyway. So overall, I'm super happy with my decision to move over to Mac OS. Granted, there are some things that I'm still getting used to and even some stuff that I don't really care for, but to me, those things can easily be overlooked when you add in the optimization, speed, and clean design that Macs bring to the table. Now don't get me wrong, I haven't changed into an Apple fanboy overnight, despite all outward appearances. <laughs> I'm not going to be tossing out my Windows PC or even discouraging others from ever buying or using a PC again. Ultimately, I'm of the view that you should just use whatever works best for you, whether it's a Mac, a PC, or whatever. You'll still have access to many of the same tools that'll help you craft your videos, or really whatever other projects you might decide to make. 
There isn't really such thing as the superior platform nowadays. And honestly, I think it's pretty silly and annoying when people try to bash one system over the other. If it helps you to get your work done better or faster, then by all means, use that. We're all creators trying to just make art, and that's a commonality that we'll all share no matter what tools you use to get the job done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. If you did, you can show it by leaving a like down below. If you want to see more filmmaking and tech related content, then be sure to check out my other videos here on the channel. And if you like what you see, then please consider subscribing with notifications enabled. It's free and helps you make sure that you never miss a future upload. If you have any feedback, suggestions, or you just want to say hi, then please do so in the comments section down below. I love reading what you guys have to say, and I try to respond to as many comments as I can. So with all of that being said, thanks again so much for watching. You've been watching All Around Filmmaker, and I will see you in the next video.